going to start. Um, welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us for the Living Atlases workshop for end user. Um, uh, we are going to present you uh, several different modules from the Atlas of Living Australia uh, platform. Uh, there will be a live demonstration, but as you know, there is what we call the demo effect. And so some dem uh, demo may be slide or videos if there is any uh, uh, issues with the brand wide or et cetera. Almost all the data portals that we are going to uh, show you are live so you can access to them except for one, but it will be live maybe in October. Um, in the presentation, you will have a lot of links, but don't worry, uh, the presentation will be uh, available on the Living Atlases website uh, later today or tomorrow. So you will be uh, able to access to all of the URL, to um, uh, the resource that we will uh, uh, give you. So uh, first, I'm going to do a short introduction with the code of conduct and some information. So, sorry? Uh, we will be, uh, so the session is recorded, uh, but please accept, expect the unexpected. So as you know, there'll be video, audio live. Uh, if you have any issue, please use the chats. There is people who will try to help you. Uh, all of the mic uh, uh, are muted when you enter the room, but uh, at the end of the presentation, we will give you some time to ask a question. And uh, at this time, you will be able to unmute you. And, uh, but please, when you finish to ask a question, uh, return to me. Yeah. Uh, even if the presentation will, and the demonstration will be in English, uh, we have people on the organizer who speak French, German, Spanish, and Portuguese. So if you are more confident to ask a question using those languages, do not hesitate. Uh, but we will translate the question in English and we will answer in English. Uh, there is two ways to um, uh, ask questions. So the first one is to use the link that we add uh, in the chat. Uh, you can ask any question. Uh, if I, we, don't have to answer, we don't have enough time to answer those questions during the workshop, uh, we will going to, uh, to answer them after the workshop on the documents. So please add your name and institution if you want an email and I will uh, email you back the presentation. And you can also raise your hand by clicking on the hand icon in the participant list or by typing slash and in the chat. So first, uh, I'm not the only organizer in this uh, workshop and I want to thank them all because they are really nice to accept to show their data portal and to take time to uh, do the demonstration. So first, I would like to thank Clara Baringo from, Sevcha from uh, Atlas Brazil. Tania Lumetzberger from Biodiversity Atlas Austria, Sylvain Morin from GB France, Sophia Radcliffe from NBA, Manasha from GB Sweden, Carol Sinou from Caladensis, and Christina Villaverde from GB Spain. So again, thank you all for joining us and taking time to, to do the live demonstration. But first, let's see what is a living atlasis. So. And to do that, I'm going to do, uh, show you a short uh, video. A living atlas is an informatics infrastructure that aggregates biodiversity data from multiple sources and makes it freely available and usable online. It is based on the Atlas of Living Australia platform and since 2014 has been adopted by numerous GBIF nodes and other organizations to support integrated access and use of their national biological and environmental information. 
The home page provides direct access to the main functionality and some quick statistics from the Atlas. There are different ways of searching through the Atlas. A simple search allows a basic exploration of a taxon or any of the attributes that it may possess, like collector, habitat, identifier, etc. From the list of occurrences returned, click and explore a single record to view related information and the quality tests run on the record. An interactive map with the distribution of the geo-referenced records for your selected taxon will be shown. Statistics of the dataset search with dynamic graphs appear, such as temporal distribution, habitats, or taxonomic hierarchy. An image tab is returned with all images found in the atlas for that taxon. Some tools are available to measure, zoom, calibrate, and download the image. We can refine our search using the filters panel that are grouped by different topics. The advanced search is available as another way to refine what we are looking for. For instance, it is useful if we want to search for more than one taxon at a time. We can also use the spatial search to define a specific area, either by drawing a polygon or by uploading a shapefile and exploring the records within that area. All URLs generated in the Atlas are persistent, so another interesting capability is that you can keep and reuse your searches made in the Atlas, although the data may have been updated. Selected records can be downloaded from the Atlas easily in two ways. A complete table with all the records and related information, or a simple checklist with the taxa included in your selection. The portal includes information about institutions, as well as their respective collections and datasets, including those that publish data through the GBIF network. The dataset landing page displays the metadata, including DOI, license information, and the records. The Living Atlas offers a detailed picture of its national biodiversity and is the basis for research, environmental monitoring, conservation planning and management, education, and citizen science activities. Contact us to be part of this community. Uh, so, as you can see in the video, there is several modules and several functionality in the data portal. So now we are going to show you all of the functionality that you can see in a, a, a virtual living atlas uh, in real data portal. So the main goal, there is two main goals for this. The first one is to uh, show you how to use this data, those data portals. So if you want to use them, uh, it would be easier. And the second one is to show you that if you decide to uh, install uh, 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 Living Atlases based on Atlas of Living Australia, you can see that the endpoints, like the results that you can get. And, um, and you will be also uh, able to see that there is different data portal and everyone has his own uh, personality. So we are going to show several modules. So the, what all of, all of the module, a lot of the functionality around the occurrence research. So it will be the simple search, the download record, the advanced search, and the explore your area. Uh, and you are, we will show you also the collectory module. So it, the module will manage all of the metadata of the collection, institution, data provider, and data sets. We will show you the spacey models, and um, there is two other models, so the spatial portal and the region models. But we are not going to show you the spatial model because it's something really uh, separate. But we are going to show you the explore by region. So first, 
the simple search. To do that, we are going to uh, use the JB Spain Biodiversity Data Portal. Christina will do the demonstration. Uh, the team behind this atlas, Living Atlas, is the JB Spain. Um, we give you the uh, idea of the number of occurrences in each data portal to give you an idea of the different range of uh, amount of data that uh, the, institution, the team has. And uh, it's to show you that we can have a really a, have a huge amount of data or a less uh, one. Um, and uh, of course, there will, uh, the, the technical choice behind those data portal won't be the same. But it's to give you uh, an idea of the range of uh, data portal we have. So this data portal is uh, available in Catalan, English, and uh, Spanish. So, Christina, I give you the hand. Yeah. Oh, you can leave the presentation. You can leave that slide, and then I, I share my the last one, the last slide. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. It's okay. So I'm going to present the biodiversity data portal of GV Spain, as Marie said. It is based on the open source software infrastructure developed by the Atlas of Living Australia. It was set up in 2014. And since then, we have been working to improve our Atlas, adapting the system to our territory and adding more functionalities always following the guidelines of the LA team and the Living Atlas community. It currently makes available nearly 32 million biodiversity records published by Spanish data providers, such as museums of natural history, universities, botanical gardens, public administrations, also some private companies and citizen science initiatives. The portal is uh, yeah, in English, Spanish and Catalan, and all code is in GitHub. So during the following 10 minutes, I'm going to show you how to search data through our biodiversity data portal and how to refine the search using the filters available. So for that, we go to the that URL, datos.gvf.s, and now I'm going to share my screen. So this is how our atlas look like. Uh, we first we choose the language we want to display that is uh, in the top of the page. In this case, we choose English. Uh, these are shortcuts to the main functionalities of the portal. Uh, there are different ways of searching uh, through the Spanish atlas. I'm going to explain just the simple search. So in the big uh, search bar here, uh, we type a specific scientific name. We are going to try with the genus Thistus. And we click on the search button. And a new page will come up with the results. So the results of the search we have performed are shown in four different ways. First of all, as a list of records available for the genus we have looked for, Thistus. And as you can see, there are over 800,000 uh, records. As a distribution map, showing the georeference occurrence records for our selected taxon. Statistics with information about our search with dynamic graphs such as license type, temporal distribution, habitats, or taxonomic hierarchy. And lastly, a gallery of images available in the Atlas for the taxon search. The images could be museum specimens or photos of the species in its natural environment. At the bottom, you can see the, the source of the image. And here we can click to see the image with full resolution and image metadata. I have uh, clicked already because it takes a, a bit to, uh, to load the image in high resolution. This is what you can see if you click on the image. This is the image metadata. And furthermore, some tools here on the left side are available 
to measure, to zoom, to calibrate, to download or to create layers in the image. So we go back to our results page overview. So at this point we could uh, download the, all the records available by clicking here in the blue button or refine our selection uh, using the filters at the, at the left side. So we are going to do the latter as the download functionality will be explained later on by my colleagues. So we go to the narrow your results area and display the taxon panel here. We want to select records only from two species of genus Cistus, and for that we filter by scientific name. We click over here on choose more, and then we select only the taxa corresponding to the species Cistus ladanifer and Cistus albidus. So we look for them, Cistus albidus and Cistus ladanifer, and we click here at the bottom, include selected items a new result page will appear and this is now the number of records for those two species. Now we could keep narrowing our search. We want to select records of those two species located in a specific country or countries. Let's try with Spain and Portugal. So for that we click on customize filters here and select country in the location panel we click on update and here we display location and we look for Spain and Portugal so we include the selected items and to keep on refining our sets lastly we could select only preserved specimens records by displaying the record tab we choose only preserved specimens, it's in Spanish, so just only for that, sorry about that. Okay, so now we can remove the filters anytime by simply clicking to the cross here, nearby the, the filter. We could copy uh, and keep the, the search URL, so we can reuse it uh, anytime we, we want. If we go to the map tab and we choose color by scientific name, nombre científico, to identify by color the two selected species in the map. If you click on the stack here on the left, you can change the type of map in view, for example. By clicking on the individual points, on the map, like here, for example, you will get details for that particular record and you can open the map and view them. We can do the same from the record tab here, clicking on view record. Here we can explore related information about the single record, what data set and institution comes from, taxonomic information, geographic information, and the uh, quality tests that have been run on the record. It is also possible to check the um, original uh, information versus the process information. It is also possible to flag an issue here if you, if you found some issue, although this functionality uh, requires to log in, in the portal. We can go back to the search uh, results page by clicking here. So that's that's all I wanted to to show you by now with the related to the simple search because my colleagues will go on so with more functionalities of the different atlas. There are training. If we can go back to the presentation, by, uh, yeah. There. Uh, I just wanted to say that there, is, there are training resources available, like exercises or presentations, if you want to continue exploring our atlas. And I included also um, email address in case you, you want to contact 
with us with the HV Spain team. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. So, um, so now so we will go to the second uh, functionality, main functionality of the uh, occurrence uh, record search. It's a download record. And so to do that, we are going to ask Silva. Uh, Silva agreed to show the open ops uh, data portal. Uh, it's a, in French, Requeteur National des Données Biodiversité. Uh, the team behind the Living Atlasis is the JB Front and the UMS Patrinat. Um, so you can access to the data portal using this URL, but the version uh, in production is not the one that we are going to show you today because the new version will be available in October. So I, as you can see, uh, there is more than 65 uh, million occurrence, so it's quite, almost the double of the JB Spain. And uh, so it's two different uh, range of data and uh, it's available in French. So Sylvain, I'll let you do the demonstration. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, so can you see it? Okay, uh, so as Miley said, uh, open up so, so the, the French Living Atlasis portal is uh, in beta version uh, but uh, for this showcase i will use our pre-production server so you are lucky you, you can see the the new version that will uh, go live uh, in october so here we are on the home page of uh, our portal where you can have uh, access to a simple search uh, easily so you can search by taxons by species group, by the year of the occurrence, by region, tone, or data provider. So let's take as an example, we will look at species for the Bretagne region, and we will look at uh, occurrences from last year until now. And on this portal, on this new version, we have 71 million data. So we have been increasing the number of occurrences. So let's look at the search. Okay. So we Sorry, Sylvain, turn... we can't hear anything of what you're saying. Sorry to Sorry. interrupt you. You're very, very low, your, your microphone. Sorry. Uh, let, me, let me increase uh, the microphone. Is it better? Yeah, much better. Thank you. Ah, sorry. Sorry. So, uh, so with the search, uh, I just uh, I just defined, but uh, without the sound, I guess you, you have understood. Uh, I have 414 results uh, among these 71 million uh, data. Uh, so Christina has shown you how to see the detail and how to refine the search. But uh, on my side, I will focus on the download feature. And so for that, I will hit the download button here. And so I get on the download screen, where the first choice I have to do is to choose if I want to download the occurrences from this uh, search result, or if I want to download the species, the different species from this search result. So let's start with the species list. I just click on this. I will enter my email address and select uh, my working field which is used for statistical purposes. And I hit next. So the species list is uh, directly downloaded as a CSV file. C can you see the CSV file? Since it's another one. Yes? Yes. Yes, okay, we can see it. Um, so we have access here to the list of different species from this search result. So I have 31 different species and uh, some taxons data associated. So that's the first thing we can do with this uh, download feature. Let's go back to the result and to the download screen again. And now we will download the list of occurrences from this search result. 
So I have a few additional fields here, the name of the file, the format of the file, so it can be a, a comma separated value or tab separated value. The, the most important thing is the data format. Uh, I have three options, but by default, the one selected is uh, SINP. Uh, it's a French format for biodiversity data. You have the logo here. So it's interesting to notice for future uh, implementers of uh, living atlases portals that you can define your own format for download. So you can customize by selecting the fields you want to download and uh, the label that will be applied to these fields. Uh, in addition to that, you have two other options related to Darwin Core format and that are uh, that are provided directly by the Living Atlasis portal. So you have the full Darwin Core format, meaning that uh, we will download all the Darwin Core fields with the Darwin Core label. And you have the customized Darwin Core format, meaning that you will be able to select which fields, in fact, which groups of fields you want to export. So let's try the customized one. I will enter my email address and my working field. And I hit the next button. So I arrive to an intermediate screen where is listed the different uh, groups of fields available. So I will add the organism info, event, location, identification, and taxons. So I'm customizing my download here. And I just click on next. So you may have briefly seen that the download was put in the queue. So it's an important fact that uh, since the volume of data can be quite huge, uh, the download is never done directly when you click the download button. It's always put in a queue. And then it will be processed when the server has the capabilities to do it. That's why it's uh, mandatory to fill your email address, because that's the way you will receive the notification once the download is ready, you will receive the download link directly in your mailbox. Uh, since we did a very small download, only 400 of data, uh, it was done by the server very quickly. And so we directly have the link here. So we can click on it and we can download it. So let me open the result file. So as you can notice, it's a zip file containing the data in CSV format and also two additional files, a readme file and a license file. So another note for future implementers is that you can customize also this download result. You can add any additional files that you, you want. Uh, let's have a look at the CSV data. So we can notice that uh, it's using a Darwin Core label for, for the different colon. That we have the field we, we selected, the uh, location one, the identification one, taxon one. And we can also check that we have all our results. So 414 plus one for the header rows. That's all for the download. I just want to add maybe uh, two things. Um, you have seen that I entered my email address. It's because for the French portal, we didn't activate the um, user, um, the registr registration of users. But that's something which is uh, available in, uh, in the Living Atlasis portal. So if you are authentified, you don't have to enter your email address every time. And uh, yes, there was a question about uh, the statistic of download. So that's a functionality also available by uh, Living Atlasis Portal. You have statistics about the download that you can see on, uh, on, another, uh, on another screen, but it's not yet implemented for the French one. That's all for me. Thank you, Sylvain, for your demonstration. Really uh, impressive. I'm going to
So um, now we're going to uh, show you the third uh, functionality of the uh, occurrence record uh, search. So it's the adv advanced search. It will be Carol uh, Sinou from Cadenensis who will uh, show you this, uh, this part. Uh, so the Caden uh, Canadensis Explorer, the team behind the Cadenensis Explorer is Cadenensis, so it's a JBF nodes. Um, there is more than six uh, million occurrence and it's available in English and in French. And the, the things that are really interested with Cadenensis, it's uh, one of the first who decide to um, to migrate their former explorer to an Atlas of Living uh, Australia uh, platform. Most of, uh, many of the institution and team uh, member of the community uh, decide to use the Atlas of Living Australia as a first data portal, like they, they use that instead of using another tool, but Cadenensis decide to migrate because of uh, technical uh, um, uh, uh, reasons. So, Carol, I let you share your screen. Okay. So thank you, Mary. Um, so um, my name is Carol Sinu. I'm the node manager for Canadensis. So um, we don't have a lot of occurrences uh, compared to the two other portals that have been presented before, but uh, it's a reality in Canada. There is, we, it's, it's a big country, but uh, that has not been widely collected. So it's representative of what we have in the collections. Um, so we're currently um, sharing data from 84 collections. A lot of them are um, publishing their data through uh, the IPT that is available on Canadensis, but we're also harvesting data from other IPTs in uh, the country. Um, there is two nodes in Canada, so Canadensis and CBIF, which is the official um, country node. Um, and we've been involved in several um, workshops. So we have a, a big, um, uh, we want to be present in the community uh, and, and, and teaching ways to uh, standardize data and, and publish data. And we've developed tools um, in the past that are uh, still uh, used by the, the committee, which is great. So um, I will start the live demo. So uh, I'm, I'm presenting today the advanced search. Um, so uh, in the advanced search, it allows you to uh, go a little bit further in the way that you are uh, searching for specific data. Um, so you have different uh, ways of, of searching data with the advanced search. Uh, there is a full text search, which uh, is a little bit like what uh, Christina showed with the simple search, so I will not uh, present that. You can also uh, search for specific species or taxon. Um, we, we currently have a bug, so that's a reality also with us. Uh, we are a small team and we have some things that we still need to improve and we, while I was preparing that uh, presentation, I've noticed that if we search for two species here, it's not working. If we search for one, it's still working, so I will not present that. But there is a way to search for uh, several species um, yeah, on Canadensis is with the batch taxon search. So I will present that just after because I just want to go through that page before. Um, so you can search uh, by scientific name. So for example, if I search for Ser um, So we come back to uh, the page that Christina showed before with uh, different ways of uh, of looking at the results. Um, so everything will go back to that page, but what's interesting that you can really uh, try to uh, use different level of search. So like I've said, with a scientific name, we'll put back a sir with Henry this. Uh, and then you can search uh, for a specific country. So let's say we're searching for Canada. We will probably not have a lot of, <laughs> a 
of Acer platanoides here because it's not uh, endemic or uh, native to Canada. Um, but you know, you can um, you can have the results for that um, a different type of terms that you've used for the, the search. And as, as Christina showed, you can also refine your, uh, your um, search afterwards by adding uh, other filters to your search. So again, if I go back to the advanced search, um, so you can have a lot of information here. Uh, with, um, you can search by institution or collection. You can search by country, like I've shown. You can search by state and territory, and you can see that we still have some cleaning to do with, uh, within the data set and the way that has been indexed, because we have some data sets where the name is not uh, uh, perfect, but we're working on that. Uh, you can search by uh, the name of the data set also. Uh, you can use catalog numbers, so that's really useful. For example, the, the people that are working in the herbarium at the uh, University of Montreal, where we are based, um, they use uh, the, the explorer to uh, see uh, sometimes their, uh, their data online. And so you can use your, your catalog number here and have a look at how the data uh, is shown. So that, that's really interesting too. Uh, you can search by record number, so it's more number that has been uh, attributed to occurrences uh, in the field. It's different from the, the catalog number, which has been attributed to the, your occurrence uh, within the collection. Um, and you can also uh, refine your search by dates, so uh, adding more information here. So it can be quite, um, you can really narrow down what you are uh, searching for uh, with the advanced search. And of course, like I've said many times uh, already, you always go back to that page of results that uh, Christina has shown. And you can, again, there add other filters to uh, narrow down what you are really searching for. So you can also uh, do some batch tax insure search. So here it will work. For example, I'm searching for a platanoides and Taraxacum officinalis. Definitely not officinalis. Um, and then you will have so uh, both uh, species um, the results for both species and you can um, also narrow down what you really search for. You can view the records uh, in the same way that you would have doing a simple search. So if I go back, uh, you can also do a catalog number search here if you want to, if you have a list of catalog numbers instead of typing them one by one in the in that tab, you can use that tab but it's really, really more useful. Um, and what's the last tab that I want to show, the last uh, part that I want to show is the spatial search. So it's really, really, really interesting. You can um, draw, uh, for example, a polygon here if I want to have occurrences from up north Quebec and, and Labrador. Um, I can draw a polygon and then I will have uh, the number of species that have been uh, found in that polygon and the number of occurrences and you can search for it and have all that information available and then you can narrow down what you are really searching. You can download like Sylvain shown. Um, so you can really, really uh, do uh, um, a lot of really interesting things there. there. And I will just go back one more time, you can import uh, Polygon uh, if you have um, uh, information already available. For example, you are searching for a really specific area with, for which you already have uh, the, the shape. You can use that here and uh, add to, uh, to the map. Um, so that's all I was wanting to here. I'm just uh, leaving that here. If you have questions specific to Canadensis or uh, for the entire um, portals uh, for the advanced search, you can uh, contact me uh, and I'll try to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Carol, for showing uh, us the Canadensis Explorer. I'm 
So I'm going to add some more information, uh, like uh, JBIF Spain, uh, Cadenensis team created a tutorial to help you to use the Cadenensis Explorer. So it's available in English and French, and I am invite you to to look at the this um, tutorial. So now we are going to another module, so called the Collectory. And uh, this, as I said at the beginning of the presentation, this uh, module, it's for the metadata of the collection, institution, and uh, uh, data provider. So we uh, manage from JBIF Sweden, we'll show you uh, this module. So it's, uh, bio uh, we will use the Biodiversity Atlas Sweden. Um, the team behind is the Swedish Biodiversity Data Infrastructure with the JBIF Sweden. Uh, it's available in English and there is more than 88 million occurrence. So Manash, I'll let you do the demonstration. Hello. How's my audio, if I may ask? Is it good enough? Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Manash Shah. I'm the system architect at uh, Swedish Museum of Natural History, and we host this portal, uh, bioatlas.se. Uh, so, as Marie mentioned, uh, uh, this uh, module called Collectory in the AADA platform, it's about managing the metadata about the, your data. So, it's about managing uh, the institutions, the collections, your data providers, the resources that you have, the attributions, and uh, managing uh, the sources of the data, how they get harvested into your system. So uh, the landing page has uh, a map view and uh, basically a way to filter out based on your uh, tags or Taxonomy. Uh, you can have a hierarchical list view uh, based on uh, institutions and their corresponding collections that are served through the portal. Uh, for example, uh, if you go into a particular institution, uh, you get a summary of uh, for the, uh, the collections that are presented in the system. And you have a graph that you can view. And from there, you can actually go to the records that are available. Uh, this particular view is at the institutional level. And you could go into uh, the collections level as well. Uh, you get an overview page with basic information that has been provided. And, uh, a statistical summary of the records. And how this is organized, uh, I would like to uh, take you to uh, admin interface. Uh, it's normally behind uh, a login wall, uh, but for the purpose of demonstration, I already have logged in. Uh, in the admin functions, uh, you are able to add different collections or institutions and the corresponding metadata. Uh, you're able to add different data resources and licenses, uh, contact person. And for the mapping of uh, different resources into to particular institutions and collections, you can have uh, uh, what is called a provider map and the institution code with their collection code, as you can see here. So this map actually enables uh, separating a particular data set uh, into different collection or aggregating multiple data resources into uh, one collection. Uh, one of the feature of this uh, module is that you can integrate, or this can be integrated with the GBIF IPT uh, as a number of uh, provider, I guess, use IPT to 
harvest and publish their data set. So for example, in our case, uh, we, have the, I, uh, we have an IPT for GVS student. And so uh, we create an endpoint of it, and then that can be updated uh, to gather uh, the information about data sets that has been recently published or updated. Uh, and so you get a list of data resources that are available. Uh, uh, in case that you do not use IPT or uh, for certain resources you want to add is as a separate resource, uh, except IPT, uh, you could actually add a new data resource and provide the metadata and the endpoints and uh, upload basically the, uh, the Darwin core file uh, which gets uh, which you could then harvest into the system. Uh, you could upload the GBIF download file, or if you have, uh, if you are synchronizing the system with GBIF, then you could uh, uh, get a summary and ask like how it is being done, or like what is the current status. So, so I guess that is it for now. Uh, should we continue with the questions or uh, do we do it at the end? Um, no, we will do the question at the end. So did you finish your demonstration? Yeah, I think so. Thank you very much, uh, Manash, for presenting the collectory. Uh, so now uh, I'm going to share my screen again. Um, Uh, so now we are going to go to the third uh, module, so the, uh, the spaces, spaces module, so what we call a BIE. Um, we will use uh, uh, the National Biodiversity Network Trust Atlas, uh, also the UK JBF mod. Uh, it will be Sophia Radcliffe who will do the demonstration, so you can uh, access to the data portal using this URL. and. As you can see, there is much more data than the other data portals that we present you. So really we have a huge range of different uh, data amounts. So, uh, and the data portal is available in English. So I'm going to... Okay. And next. So Sophia, I let you do the demonstration. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I hope you can see my screen. Um, um, my name is Sophia Ratcliffe. I'm the data manager for the MBN Atlas. And um, as Marie said, we're the, um, the UK installation um, of, the a, of the ALA. And uh, we've launched in April 2017. And I'm going to show you how to explore and look at the species, the taxon information on, a, on the atlas. And if we click on the species in, species in the navigation, um, it's a, a free text search. And what I should say is the, um, the MBN atlas uh, the, uh, uses the UK species inventory as the taxonomic backbone. Um, this is a, a, a database of um, of names, of, ta of taxon names managed by the Natural History Museum in London and it includes all taxa that are likely to be recorded in the UK so then that's both native and non-native taxa and we update the, um, the species component every three or four months with an update from the Natural History Museum. Um, so uh, it's a free text search 
So if I, I search for um, myotis, we get a list, it, it, um, an automatic completion list of names. It returns both common names, um, accepted names and synonyms. And what I can do is if I just click straight on um, an, a, a name, and it doesn't really matter which one, I go directly to the page for that particular taxa. And what it gives us is at the top is the, um, the hierarchy, the taxonomic hierarchy for the, for the name, um, the common name, um, the taxonic rank, it's an accepted name, and the establishment status. So all this information comes from the UKSI, um, so from the Species Dictionary. I have several tabs with a, an overview tab with um, information comes from Wikipedia, and then we can see a map with um, the occurrence records, with the links that go to the spatial portal and to the records component that um, Christina um, demonstrated. The one tab will just go through to the map, the other tab would go through to view the records. So we'd see all, all 3,040 records for the whiskered bat. Um, if I go back and do another search, say for Bumblebee, but rather than selecting a name, I click on quite a bit more. Click on the search button, it actually does a, does a search. Um, and what, what, these are all the, the names that match a bumblebee in, in the dictionary. We can order by scientific name, common name or the rank, and ascending or descending. We can also download them. So this will download a CSV file of all the names, including the taxonomic hierarchy. If we've got a, an, an image available for the, um, for the name, for the taxon, it'll show here. So I think we've, we've just got the one here. And the, the, the species dictionary, the UKSI includes a taxon group. So that it, it gives us the taxon group as well as the habitat for that taxa. Uh, we have a link to view the images that are associated. This is a genus record. Um, so um, a link to view the records for the genus, plus also a link to go to the records component that we've already seen that shows all the occurrences for um, all, all bumblebees um, in the atlas. We can filter on these results. So perhaps we're actually only interested in species and that we've, so we've got nine um, species of, bum, of bumblebee listed here. And I can filter further by, by selecting either native or non-native or any of the other um, habitats, terrestrial, marine or uh, freshwater if they were available. Um, one, you can do a complete search, so it returns all the names within um, the species dictionary, and then, but this is quite interesting, it's quite useful, I get asked what are the families that are in particular groups, so you can filter all the names, so for, just to show the, fa the families, and then select a particular taxon group, say true flies and I can download those into a CSV file and send them off. So that's really useful functionality that I use quite often. And again, so we've got the, the habitat as well, so I can filter by freshwater and I get the, the one freshwater uh, diptera family in the data set. Um, I go straight to the European Otter page. One other thing that we have are species lists. So many of the um, we use species lists on the MBN Atlas to store designations for species, and um, these are in, included in the index. Um, so we can see that um, the otter is on the Scot Scottish Rural Development Programme list. It's also RSBB priority species 
and many other um, designations. Um, and again, we have the tabs. So more of the gallery, we can see the names. So the, um, the otter has several common names and, we, and it shows the different languages that those common names are in. The classification, that's so the taxonomic hierarchy. Um, we have a similar um, charts of the records that we've seen in the, the records component. And we don't have anything under literature, literature or sequences, but we can see the data provided. Providers. So these are the, the institutions that share their records, share their otter records with us and the license that they've shared it under and also the number of records that they've shared. And I think the, the only, the last thing I wanted to, to show you was a separate portal that we've set up based on the species component. So that's um, the species component I've just shown you on the, the main MBN atlas, but we have um, an atlas for each of the countries within the UK, include, and also Isle of, the Isle of Man as well. So within the Welsh portal, the, the Welsh government asked us to set up um, a, a species portal, but just for invasive non-native. So there's a filter behind this that just, that, so that it just includes those non-native um, taxa and then what we've added is a series of species lists to enable us to filter these um, species by whatever species list uh, they've, they're, they're on so for example the gb uh, non-native species alert we filter that by that we can see the 40 um, alert species on the atlas and see um, luckily we actually don't have any records of many of them um, but that is uh, a really useful way for the Welsh Government to detect when um, non-native invasive um, species are recorded on the atlas and uh, they also have a uh, other filters as well um, based, also based on species lists and um, yeah I, I think that's I think that's it. If you've got any questions about this, please, please contact me. I'm really happy to, to answer any questions. Okay. Thank you, Sophia, for the demonstration of the Spacey uh, Explorer of NBN Atlas. Um, And um, you can also find some uh, document, uh, documentation written by the NBN team uh, to uh, help you discover their atlas. And actually, uh, so there is uh, the link on the doc.nbnatlas.org. Uh, so there is several different uh, sections. So you may uh, look for search the NBN atlas and download data. <clears throat> now we are going to uh, 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 another functionality of the occurrence records. It's uh, explore your area. So Clara from the uh, uh, SB Brazil, uh, the Brazilian JBIP node will uh, show you this uh, uh, functionality. Uh, and the data uh, portal is available in Portuguese and has more than four, uh, 15 million occurrence. And you have a link to the data portal uh, over there. So thank you, Clara. I will give you the end to do your presentation, to so demonstration. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, everyone, hello everyone. First, I would like to thank you, you, Maria Liz, and the workshop organizers for the invitation to, the sh to show the Explorer your area too. My name is Clara, I'm a data manager in the Brazilian Biodiversity Information System. After several attempts to implement Living Atlas platform during 2018 and 2019, we finally launched the Atlas last year, in August. 
We have almost 60 million records in almost 250 collections. We know there are much more collections and projects and data in Brazil and images and other information, but step by step, we, we will get there. Um, explore your area is a tool of the model called Alaha and an easy way to explore which species can be found in a, on a given distance. So to begin the demonstration, explore your area could be assessed from the platform mains page um, by clicking on explore here and selected by area. Oops. Um, so afterwards, uh, you can type here um, the desired place, location, or address. As I am based in Brasilia, I will type G Brasilia National Park, for example. And then you can search here. And by default, the system shows a five kilometers radius, but you can increase uh, the distance and select 10, for example. Um, and it will display G, G species. And the system allows you to click in, in each taxonomic group and see G records. And in addition, it's also possible to click in one of, of the single records and you can go to another module that Chris already presented. Um, okay. So there are several options to better analyze and visualize your selected data. First, you can download your search here. You can download all records or the, spe the, the species checklist. Um, you can also select, for example, plants and you can go to see all the selected records again. And then you can see the map, you can go also to the special portal and analyze this data. You can see the records. I don't want to go too much into detail because it was already presented. Um, explore your area also allows you to access to more information about specific species in the species catalog. For that, it's necessary to have implemented the species catalog module as well. Uh, so in that case, we will select a typical Brazilian <laughs> Sabana tree, for example, this one. You can click and then you can have the option to go to the species profile. Then you can, and you will see all the species and all this information. And what else? Um, so while Special portal allows more structure queries and analyzes the explore your area has a very friendly format and the user is able to know the species registered in a small area of one to 10 kilometers. And you can also see the number of species per taxon in that area and also a number of record by species. So, and finally, explore your area could be a useful tool for several purposes and studies, among others, send out small restoration projects, environmental impact assessments, or to prepare a biodiversity survey or a field trip. Um, that's, that's almost all. And uh, we have here in, oops. Here we have, um, if you want to comment something, you can participate here, send in a comment or suggestion, and you can also see all our videos and tutorials of how to organize your data and publish. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ra, for your uh, demonstration. You're welcome. It was really interesting. Uh, before uh, so yeah uh, I, I add a link of the to the tutorial that you were uh, just speaking about uh, talking about uh, so there is two uh, videos but i think they are only in portuguese uh, oh. we have a few with subtitles english subtitles okay. 
Okay, so there is some uh, subtitle. Uh, before going to the last model, I just want to uh, uh, tell something because uh, we are going we we uh, we uh, we are going to show you just seven portals in live, um, but there is more than twenty uh, data portal based on Atlas of Living Australia uh, uh, today. Uh, so, uh, for instance, uh, the Guatemala team uh, had the link to their data portal. So I invite you to uh, to uh, see the different other data portals. Um, you can ask any question in the document. Uh, uh, actually, Vicente, as uh, a technical coordinator, is answer them in live. So do not hesitate to uh, to add any question. Um, and as you can, see, uh, as you were able to see on the on the demonstration, all modules are linked from one to another. And I think it's really in, that's why I wanted we wanted to show you uh, the, to do this demonstration to show the link between the different modules. And I just want to add a, a, a smaller remark. Uh, Ala Hub is the technical name of the uh, occurrence research uh, record search uh, modules but instead of using the technical name we use more like non-technical name so uh, now we are going to the last part of the um, to start the last part of our workshop and it's uh, explore by regions um, and first we are going to uh, we are going to uh, watch the second video that you can find on the YouTube uh, uh, channel. Um, it's about the region and the spatial models in an uh, atlas. Uh, we are not going to show you a spatial data portal today, uh, but we, uh, after this video, you will be able to uh, see the Austria region model. A living atlas is an informatics infrastructure that aggregates biodiversity data from multiple sources and makes it freely available and usable online. In this video, we are going to focus on two of its spatial components. Using the region section, it is possible to find the species recorded in a defined region, such as a protected area, habitat, or territory. When users click on the name or area in the map, the atlas displays a list of all the species recorded in the region, clustered by their higher taxonomic group. By exploring a taxonomic group or a species, all records belonging to the selection can be highlighted for detailed exploration and downloaded as a checklist or a records file. The spatial portal enables users to map a species and explore the data for that species by time, region, data quality, and the species link to the natural environment. Users can create maps with several species at the same time to explore the relationships between taxa. Using the tools, subsets of the data can be used for further analysis. Users can define their own areas by drawing polygons around the area of interest or by uploading GIS files, such as shapefiles. In addition, areas can be defined by spatial information on environment conditions, such as rainfall and altitude. Once an area is mapped, users can generate a report of the data available. This report contains statistics about the biodiversity for this area, such as number of species, endemic species, details of checklists, lists of species of conservation interest, or invasive species. All of these lists can be easily downloaded from the portal. Additionally, users can explore the links between species and their environment. Any links between the selected species and the environmental variables may help define a species ecological niche. Charts can be generated to show patterns in the data and identify anomalies. 
it is also possible to generate internationally recognized measures for a species, such as extent of occurrence and area of occupancy, which are used to inform decisions about species conservation. The Living Atlas offers a detailed picture of its national biodiversity and is the basis for research, environmental monitoring, conservation planning and management, education, and citizen science activities. Contact us to be part of this community. So, like the first video you saw, uh, we you just watch the theoretical theoretical uh, uh, part of uh, uh, the Living Atlas, the spatial uh, data portal, and the um, region model. And now we are going to show you a live uh, region models, and uh, it's a we will use the Biodiversity Atlas Austria. I'm not going to say the name in German. In, uh, German. <laughs> Uh, the link to the data portal is biodiversityatlas.at. Um, it's a smaller uh, uh, data portal with less uh, occurrences, but it doesn't mean that it's not uh, useful. So uh, there is around uh, 360,000 new occurrences, and it's available in German. And uh, Tanya from uh, the Biodiversity Atlas Austria will uh, show you the this data portal. So Tanya, I'll let you share your screen. Okay, hi, can you see the screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So yeah, um, my name is Tanya and I'm responsible for the uh, Austrian installation, which is called the Biodiversity Atlas Austria. And maybe to, uh, there was a question on how long it took us. So um, we started thinking and kind of working in mid-2018. And we finally launched it uh, at the end of last year. And um, as you already said, we, I think we are kind of the smaller portal here uh, with uh, not as many occurrences now at the moment. Um, so I'd like to show you the Explore by Region uh, tool. Uh, in our atlas and you know, what you can see is the main page um, from the atlas and you can directly go to the explore by region um, tool from here so uh, from here you come to the main starting page of the explore by regions tool and um, it allows uh, the users and you um, to explore the recorded species in a defined region in our case, it's um, in the administrative regions like state or district or municipality uh, or in a protected area such as a national park or even like in the eco-regions of Austria. Um, as you see, as it's kind of obvious, so the regions or the categories you can select in this tool depend on the data portal. So on the left hand side here, uh, you can choose from one of the categories, which will be visualized on the map on the right side. So I'd like to show you um, the districts. So you already see the map is kind of changing. And um, you can then select one of the region either by clicking, uh, by searching and clicking in the list, the region you want to have. So I'm looking for uh, the district tool. Or you can also just like click into the map and select the region. So I do that here. Um, you can also zoom to the region if you didn't uh, select it at the first time. And if I now um, select it, uh, the atlas will display me all the species recorded in that region. Um, so in this new um, window, uh, you see the district of Tulln on the right side of the map with all the recorded species occurrences. And on top here on the left, you see uh, the total occurrences in that region and also uh, the total number of species. And in the list below on the left, there are kind of the, the different species are listed here and by 
clustered by different taxonomic groups, which you can also uh, click onto and filter. So for example, I go to the insects and then to the butterflies and whatever I select here, uh, the map will display my selection immediately on the right. Um, here in this panel, you see all the different species from the butterflies now in the district. And you also see uh, the, how many occurrences we have in that region. And apart from this list, which is kind of, um, yeah, very dry, more or less, you can also do like a more visualized search. So by searching or filtering by taxonomy, you have a pie chart. And here, by clicking onto the slices, uh, you can drill into the different lower taxonomic levels. So we start with animalia, with, uh, we go down uh, to the insects, and then we have here, the big one here is the butterflies, and we click onto it. And you see on the right, the map constantly changes as well. If I kind of clicked too deep, I can go um, a taxonomic level higher again. And um, it kind of makes fun to kind of look through what kind of families we've got. You can also click here. And you can also, you can drill down right to um, the species level. So um, another very nice tool, which a function which is included in the Explore by Region uh, tool is um, the time control which uh, you see here um, on top of the map. And by clicking on the play button here, it will start to automatically display the species uh, by decade, starting with 1850 up until the latest year. So I now click play and it goes 1815 to 1860, then jumps 1816 to 1870 and so on. And you can pause, you can also hold, and if you're kind of tired, you can just reset. And then you can all the records again from that district. Um, so it's kind of a nice tool to um, select visually to um, the data you want. So let's try again, do the insects, the butterflies. And then if you don't want just um, the decades, you can manually drag the handles here. And I say, okay, I want to have it from 2000 to 2020. And now I get all the butterfly data from Tuln between 2000 and 2020. And it's about a thousand records from about 450 uh, butterfly species. And now if I'm happy kind of with my selection, I can either uh, have a look and view all the species occurrences in detail we've already seen in the advanced search, or um, I can also download the species records. So either download them as a species checklist, or um, which is kind of handy to get a checklist of species for that particular region and to go out into the field and kind of have a look. Or you can also download all the occurrence records. Another thing, I think we've saw it in the explore by uh, area tool, when you click onto one of the species, you can also go to the species profile page if you want to get more information um, on the species itself. And maybe just a little hint because we've seen on the advanced search that you can also uh, look by species by year and also by region, for example, by some regions. In this portal, you only get the occurrences displayed that have a valid date. So if you have occurrences in your portal that don't have a valid date, the kind of results between those two models will differ. But it's kind of nice to see that all the different tools you've seen in the last couple of hours are kind of interlinked and you can jump between the portals and between the models. So it's, it's quite nice. So yeah, that was from my side. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tanya, for showing the region model. Um, we don't have more time, like five minutes, so uh, <laughs> <What's okay? laughs> um, so this is, oh, I need to share my screen.
Uh, so, so we just finished the demonstration of the biodiversity atlas of Austria, and now, uh, so to conclude this workshop, uh, I we wrote this uh, useful resource and links uh, slide. Um, so you will have a link uh, of all of the exercises or tutorial or uh, documentation. Um, uh, writing and made by the uh, team that present the uh, data portal, so JB Spain, Canadensis, SIB, Brazil, and BN. But we also add the LA user guides that you might be helpful if, uh, for to see all of the possibility of the Atlas of Living Australia platform. Uh, we add uh, the Atlas uh, Living Atlases community website. And the last link, it's uh, so if you are interested by the uh, installing and maintaining uh, an uh, Atlas of Living uh, uh, data portal based on the Atlas of Living Australia uh, platform, uh, the last link is where you need to start. So it's the deployment quick start guide. Uh, but first, uh, we will invite you to contact. Uh, uh, Vicente, uh, the uh, technical coordinator, or me. Uh, uh, like this, you will have more information. We will be able to help you. you we will be able to add you to the Slack, uh, Slack uh, channel. And uh, But I, I'm not going to speak about that a lot today because it's more a non-technical uh, workshop. Um, I'm, I don't know if we have time for a question or two. I know that the question, uh, people had added question to the document and um, Vicente uh, and Silva and other people answer directly, but maybe if you have uh, one or one question maybe or. I I'm going to stop to share to see the participants, sorry. Uh, so anyway, if you have any more question, uh, you can, uh, let me just share. So Marie, I think all the questions that were captured in the document were answered already. I don't yes. think there is any pending one. Okay, so that's great. And, uh, and if you have uh, more question, like tomorrow, or, uh, you can contact me uh, using this email address or you can contact Vicente if it's more technical uh, question. Um, we also have a Twitter account and you have the website with uh, information about the participants, documentation, and uh, it's where you will be able to find the presentation. I don't know if Tadwick has, will, we will upload the presentation. I know that the, uh, uh, the video, the recording will be available. Um, and uh, we invite you to join us for our symposium during the third week uh, online conference in October. Um, uh, we will talk about uh, the community, uh, but also, and I think it's really great, uh, we will do a, a presentation about the tools that have been put in place by Vicente and the community to help the newcomers, so the remote session and the generator. Um, and the symposium will uh, end with a presentation uh, that Dave Martin will do uh, about the work uh, done by the Atlas of Living Australia technical team and the JBF Secretariat technical team. So I think it will be great if you can join us for our symposium. So thank you very much uh, for you one minute there is one question i found okay okay it's from ian he says as a customer shopping for a data aggregation tool for my country what would you say would be the advantages of using a living, uh, living atlas portal over competing products uh we have answered in the in, in the document but in the third part Okay, so I, I think uh, the, the user who uses the data portal will be uh, 
better to answer that question. But uh, and I'm going to add, because I used to work for the JB Prince, and uh, uh, I'm going to add that when you are a really small team and you are one technical uh, developer, it's really helpful to have this community, even if it's not 1,000 people, but maybe just 20 or 30 developers. But when you are stuck, you don't feel alone. And we know that in uh, biodiversity in research, it's sometimes really hard to have more than one developers. So this is really helpful. And also due to the turnovers of developers, uh, when a new uh, a developer arrives in the team, uh, it will be able to enter the code and the community and everything easily with uh, thanks to the to the community. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, I think we right in time. Uh, do I have to? If you have any question, you can ask us through the document or sending us an email. Thank you.